Hey folks, Fat Guy Flies RC coming to you from the man cave. Well, as you can see, I have the uh, FMS Futura version 3, perfectly balanced, put together, and assigned the radio. Now, I used my settings from my original uh, FMS Futura 80 millimeter version 3, Tomahawk design. And you're thinking, well, if you have that one, why do you have this one? Well, because this is. This should pretty well explain it right here. Not all my flights happen on camera. Unfortunately, I would have loved to have had that one on camera because I could have just seen just how badly I screwed up. Um, but after all said and done, it was pilot error after because all the parts worked. The uh, ESC still worked. I had no problem with the receiver. I had no problem with the signal. Everything worked. It was just stri strictly pilot error. I wish I had it on this. Like I said, I wish I had it. Had it on video, but to console my shattered RC pilot heart, I engaged in some retail therapy and purchased this one. Now, I normally would buy almost if I'm going to buy a plane, I, I try to go from a hobby zone because they're my sponsor. And then, you know, if they can't give me a plane, sometimes I'll just buy it from them because I'm trying to help them out too. But they don't carry the red one or the green one, only they have the red one. Well, if they only fair RC carries this green mod one. So it's exactly the same plane, just in the green, and I wanted it to match the, uh, at least I can't see it anywhere else online, and what in Hobby Zone in the green, I wanted it to match its little brother here, the uh, 64 millimeter Futura. I mean, the, the design is slightly different, but you can see where they're definitely related. Now, Obviously, if you've noticed, the lights are flickering, the battery must be in it, and she's balanced. So let's just go ahead and talk about gears up. And I try to, you know, there's, there's controversy back and forth. You know, check your CG with the gear up. Check your CG with the gear down. You know what? I do both. But for this purpose right here, I'm doing it on the stand. Okay? She's perfectly balanced. This is the way she's going to be flying most of the time. So... With it like this, I can't put the gear down because of my CG standard in the way. But what I would like to be able to see is when the gear goes down, for it to slightly, for the nose to rise just a little bit. So I can't do that with a stand. But as you can see, we'll talk about the numbers in a second, she's perfectly level. And this is at the stock um, manual set CG. With a 4000 where I had it. Now... I may see these green, these big black dots here. Okay, if you look at the bottom of this the wing, the metal or the, or the hard plastic, where it ends, basically a full pad, a finger pad, is where that that dot is. That's where I put that dot there with a the sharpie. That's where the CG is. It from the leading edge root, not the edge of the wing, but the edge root, which is where on a jet or any plane where the where the wing touches the fuse. That's the root. 100, 100 to 105 millimeters back. So the very start of that dot is 100. The very end of that dot is 105. And she CGs right there, basically perfectly. Now, you're going to be a little bit of variance with your, your fingers. But at the field, she's not you know actively wanting to fall back or, or pitch forward. So I'm good with that. So let's put the gear down. And I'm hoping that she's going to want to favor going back on her tail a little bit. Yeah, just a touch. All right, that's great. That's what I want. All right, because that means landing is going to make it that much easier, okay? Because when you come in, she's going to naturally want to kind of come in just a little nose up, which is great because this gear is awesome. Let me move this camera back just a touch. I'm sorry, I realize you're not getting the whole picture there. All right, now... When we did the build, which is a really simple, quick build, um, the reflex was just sitting in there, okay? Now, I just I can't find anything in the manual about where the reflex is supposed to set, okay? So, to show you where I put it, if you look in the middle there, okay? See that flashing orange down there? The reflex is right there on the end of the wooden tray, now I've got a Gorilla glued down. This is my Gen 2 Lemon RX. 
seven channel receiver, and in that seventh channel is where I have put in the reflex mode, which is all three modes. Now, if you notice, it's got that slow, uh, that slow strobe on the reflex of the very Go into the receiver, that that slap, slashing uh, strobe down there, kind of slow. That's the AS3X version or their wind mitigation. Okay. Now the middle one. Experienced mode. Notice how it's just kind of a slow flash. That means no gyro, no nothing. We'll go over this in just a second. And then that constant orange means stabilized. When this was the plane already had this set up, but watch that elevator. As I go up, look at that elevator. See how it's holding its position? Watch your ailerons. See how they're holding their position? Okay. That elevator's holding its position. What would that do if you're flying like this and I put it into stabilize mode? That would level the plane. Okay. Stabilize mode, elevator up, that would level the plane. Now, I won't be flying with that. I'll be flying in the... Yes. A, what I'm calling AS3X mode from the Spectrum world, um, I believe that Reflex calls it, oh gosh, let me see, it's three, stabilized mode, okay, they have stabilized, optimized, or gyro off, okay, so stabilized mode, which is, I think it's what I got, stabilized right, mode. that's self-level, like safe in the uh, Spectrum world, or, or beginner mode. Middle mode, gyro off, and then they have optimized mode, which I'm going to call AS3X, so that's what I'm using as the terminology, but that is just wind mitigation. Now, the drawback with the reflex system is tuned for this plane, unless you know how to get into that channel, okay, I can't control how much uh, uh, gains control or how much correction it has, okay? I can't control that unless I take that cable, put that app on the computer, and take the reflex or find a way to plug in there without, you know, where I can get to it, which, and then, and then go in there and change it. But no, I'd rather just leave it alone because I will tell you, on the other Futura, I left it that way and the optimized mode was perfect. It did over oscillate at high speeds, like too much op, uh, uh, correction. And when the wind was hitting, hitting it, you know, back and forth, it kind of kept it locked in, like, which is what I'm wanting AS3X to do. Now, one thing I didn't do that I'm going to do now, because I want to go demonstrate, if you notice, a rudder, right? Nothing's cooked up to the rudder. I went ahead and hooked up all the other control services, but I know I'm kind of all over the place. But what happened to my, I just had it. I have my hand. Okay. Give me just a second. All right, let's pause there while I find this, and then we'll come right back. All right, we're back. Now, I found it. What I wanted to sh demonstrate was I don't have anything hooked up to the rudder, okay? All the other control surfaces, they all had the same one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these uh, push rods, control rods, okay? They're all the, exactly the same length. On the ailerons, the book calls to hook them up in the outermost hole on the, on the arm of the servo, and then the ball link's already installed. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that in. I had, this was like really, really tight, trying to get it in the hole. So what I ended up having to do was taking a pair of pliers and then just kind of pinch, force that rod through that. Now you could take your knife and kind of hollow out that, um, hollow out the opening that the, that the rod's going through, but I, I don't want to get rid of the material. Okay. Get that in there. Come on. This is just one of them things you have to do. Alright, just have to get it pushed through there. Angle it through. Now look. I don't know how closely you can see that. I want to show you. I'm going to grab the camera here. 
because this is an important point because it's part of setting up a model. Okay. okay. Pay attention to the bottom of the screen there. Okay. If you look where that falls, it falls past because the rudder, I've got the rudder centered, it falls past the connection. So what you'd have to do is grab your ball, and I'd always rather be able to push, uh, turn it in, or it's make it shorter, right to tight, left to loose. So right is going to make it shorter. And then you're going to set that on. When I set that on there, look, it pushed the rudder off a little bit. So that's not where I want it. Well, actually, no. I hold the rudder in place with my fingers here. Let me show you if I can get you closer what I'm doing. I'm going to hold the rudder in place here, okay, and then I'm going to set that on there. When I push it, put my set that on there, it kind of push the rudder off to a little, a little bit to the side. So, what I want it to do is my lead on there is perfectly centered, but if you notice, the rudder's off just a little bit. So, I'm going to make it a little more rotation and lay that on there. Still, two more rotations. And look, maybe one more. And look where it's at now. See, whereas when I, when I laid that on there before, it was kicked off to the side. Now when I put it on there, the whole structure is pretty much, not, actually it's a little tad too much now. Let's go back out one. Okay. I just have to look at it from behind, directly behind. Sorry if my head's in the way. Yeah, that's perfect right there. But that's the process. You'll just move your uh, ball link, your, your control rod, in and out until you've got that perfectly happy. Now, if it's just off by a few millimeters, you can take that out the sub trim, which is no big deal. But okay, now and all of this. Uh, pull the camera back just a touch. This is where having a camera person to film would help would be great. Right aileron, left aileron, up elevator, down elevator, right rudder, left rudder. Now and there's your flaps. 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 Okay. Let's go over electronics or, or settings in the radio. All right. This is how I set it up, and then we'll go inside the plane. All right. There is my model. Okay. Here's my... Everything's at 100% for travel. Didn't have to reverse anything. My right... And if this is your first... Mo if this is a jet, this is not your... You've got this, but this is not your first one. Okay, my high rates, I have them on my G switch. My high rates are 100% throws, 20% expo on the aileron. Mid rates. On my aileron? No, I'm sorry. High rates. That's my, that did, it didn't change, did it? It didn't change. Okay, let's go, now let's go to uh, my low rates, low rates on the aileron are 70%, 20% expo. Mid my rates. mid rates are 80 over 20 and my high, high rates is 100 over 20. Now I like pulling the switch towards me, I can start high, that's my high. And my low, low is 70 over 20, high okay? Rates. Now let's go to high like this, take an elevator. My high rate's 100, mid, rate. mid is 80, low, low is 70, okay? And rudder, mid rate. I leave rudder at 100% with 10% expo on all low of it. Rate. Okay, now. Put that back. Now, let's look at that. Here, high you look at the control services. Here's my high rates ailerons. Okay. Mid rates. Mid -rate. Low rates. Low rates. Okay. Elevator. High, high rates. rates. Mid rate. Mid -rate. Which would be the 80. And low, low which rate. was the 70. And the rudder is always 100%. Okay. Now, let's look at our flap settings. Let's go on the computer first. All right, here's the flap settings. On a spectrum, flaps all the way up are going to be a negative 100% with no mix, obviously. Takeoff is going to be a negative 35 with a positive 6%, okay, which has elevator down. And then for landing, you're going to have a, a positive 75% with a positive 10% down mix for the uh, elevator. Now watch, look at my flaps. Takeoff. Take off. Okay, if you look at that elevator, it moved just a tiny bit. Maybe you can catch it. Flaps up. 
Yeah, yeah. It's almost almost undetectable. All right. Landing. Now landing flaps. The elevator did go down a little bit. But like I say, it's only ten percent. So you're, it's going to be very hard to even see that. Let me move you a little bit closer. See the flaps are up, they're all the way up. Takeoff Take goes down a little bit. Landing, flaps. Landing just a little bit more. Okay, that's the settings. And like I say, it's the exact same plane, the exact same power. Okay, so I know that my settings, and it flew amazing at those settings. Okay, now there's only, you can put 5,000s in this, you can put 3,500s. But everyone who flies this plane will agree that the 4006S is just about absolutely perfect. However, most of my 4S's are in such a configuration that the canopy's not going to close. Now you're going to find, everybody's going to tell you, you're going to have to cut, some, cut your foam, your foam out of your canopy. I had to remove this much foam however there's an act there was a little air hole here anyway so it's not and there's nothing in here okay there's, there's nothing in here and it is solid structure on both sides so don't let that bother you that's a common practice don't think well there's something they shouldn't have designed it that way no they know you're going to do that so don't don't let that bother you okay that shouldn't be that big of a deal now but to get this thing to cg right the book's going to tell you put it on the wooden tray no. Take your 4,000 and pull it forward about maybe a half inch up on the uh, foam lip, okay? And anchor it down there with that first strap and she'll CG perfectly. Now, if I were to put the battery further back where it sits level in there, I would still have to cover, cover a little bit of that foam out because it didn't quite fit. But I have found that putting that 4,000 just a tad up on that, um, where's my shirt? Up on that uh, foam lip there, makes me CG just perfect. I'm gonna mark that right there. Okay. All right, and a four thousand is perfect for the plane. Now, if I put a five thousand, then I might just sit flush on the wooden tray. But the four thousand just gives you, it'll give you a good four minutes of flight time. Maybe four and a half if you just cruise around slow most of the time. Just keep her in the air. Um, but if you're going to hit it, three and a half minutes. Okay, I remember if I remember right, my timer on mine was four minutes. Okay, and I do a lot of mixed flying with it. So um, you're going to have to carve that out. Now, looky here. Okay, motor, motor on. is on. Look at how much the ESC is not calibrated. Look at how much I have to move the stick before the motor comes on. That's almost a third of the stick before the motor comes on. So that means this ESC is not calibrated. I should have immediate thrust the moment I, the moment I touch that throttle. So we're going to go over how to do that. Make sure your model, your, your throttle cut is off so your, your motor would work. Unplug your model. Take your throttle all the way up to high okay now this ESC if I remember it's pretty quiet so what you're going to be listening for is and make sure transmitter's on you're listening for two beats as soon as you hear the first it's going to go with a little dance with the gyro hear two beats and then I'm going to immediately lower that throttle but I'm going to be quiet while I do that because if I remember right the ESC is very, is very quiet Okay. Nope, I didn't wait long enough. All right, take it out, all the way up. Now. Okay, now. Yeah, got it. I've got immediate, immediate thrust. All right, so make sure your throttle cut is off. In other words, the motor will work. Unplug 
your ES, your of course you're going to bind out and you're ready to go. Unplug your battery. Put your throttle all the way up. Okay. Plug the model in. You're going to hear a couple of beeps. It'll go through its gyro dance. As soon as it's done with that gyro dance, pull your throttle all the way down. And that will calibrate your ESC. All right. We talked about CG. We talked about the rates. We talked about... Um, oh, let me show you a few features of the plane real quick. Um, just to show. This is just for fun. Just for fun. Um, I will be putting a nice heavy clear coat of the Midwax on here. And, and basically, on these um, push rods here, I only had to adjust the ailerons and I had to adjust that, well, that rudder. Other than that, the push rods were spot on and she's on the bench perfectly trimmed. She's on the bench trim. Okay. Remember, every sometimes the wing is shaped a little bit differently, and you know things that you can't really see with the naked eye. So, on the flight trim or on the bench trim is nice, but getting her in flight trimmed her there. That's the true trim. No, I won't know until I fly. Uh oh. It happens. I'd rather be stuck down than stuck up. Don't be stuck up. Always cycle your gear a couple of times before you take off. Just, just, just do it. Okay. Now, the there's where your or where you get your motor. You'll have to uh, cut through this little uh, um, sticker here to get to that screw to take that off. And that's when we put the uh, afterburner in. I'll be showing you how to do that. Um, that's the only thing you have to remove, and may have removed. Probably may have removed the motor. Yeah, you may have removed the motor, uh, which is no big deal. Um, it's got the nice sequence door there. So remember, well, it falls, but just remember, it's pretty, pretty. Uh, well, I guess it is quick. I don't know what I'm But this right here was a big cause of frustration for me in the red one because this door would sometimes get hung up. When flying, and then the door it would not it would uh, catch underneath that lip right there, you know, because the wind hitting it. So make sure that you're not putting it to to help with that. Just like with a T20 or a Trojan, put your gear up and down when you're flying straight and level. When you got the wind going sideways against it, you don't want to it to catch that lip right there on the edge there. So that's a little pro advice that uh, I'm not going to charge extra for. So because uh, I'm not a pro. But she's got lights all over. She's got flaps. She's got a lot of attitude. And I say she because I think women are beautiful and, and, uh, and jets are beautiful. And that's why I equate the two together. But um, can't wait to give you a maiden for her. Um, I will fly her before I get the uh, afterburner because it's going to be in next week sometime. And I've got this weekend off and I want to fly it. So that's the only other thing we still have to do. You do have a nice... Um, hard plastic uh, tail cone there and so if you're going to stand in the corner that's fine but also at the same time if you're going to stand it on its nose in the corner or wherever you put your plane you have a hard cone nose there too so you don't have to worry about getting foam uh, damaged but uh, there you go I put the 4000 there flyer get four minutes don't forget do something with this plastic, this surface here, because this will get ate up. This is just bare foam, bare painted foam, and it just, it gets, it gets ate up. It just gets ate up. Stickers are kind of peeling away here and there, but when I put that min wax on there, that'll lock everything down. Right. Hey folks, back guy flies I see. Back to, uh, from the man cave. Uh, a little update, I forgot to cover something in the radio setup video for the FMS Futurist uh, 80mm was I forgot to show you how to assign a switch to get all three levels of the reflex system to work. So let me show you what you do. And we'll go over the model here just a second. Show you what, what they do and how, how the function is. But first, what you're going to want to do, what you're going to want to want to do, okay, 
you're going to go to your model, okay, and you're going to go, make sure you're already on the model, and then go, uh, don't worry about it, the not, model's not going to go anywhere. Go out of the model, system setup, okay, but you're outside, now you're, the, the signal from the, these two, the receiver and the transmitter are not talking to each other now, and you're going to go down here to a channel of sign, and you're going to want to make sure that your aux 2, or your 7th, remember I said I have, I have a 7th channel, to operate the reflex, make sure that 7 is aux 2, and this is where you would pick whatever switch you want it to be. Okay, well, I like mine to be on my B, so you change that to B, okay, and then just to make sure it's working right, go, go back here next and make sure that channel 7 is aux 2. Aux 2, aux 2 is your 7th channel. So if you want the, re the reflex to work with all three levels, you're going to have to have a seven channel receiver. Now, real quick, just to show you, I don't know if I cover this or not, the radio. Oh yeah, okay. When it's in st stabilized, mode. stabilized mode, it has, a, the reflex is a solid orange. Experienced and experience mode. mode or no gyro, it has a very slow beep or flash. And then when it's an AS3X or wind mitigation, it's flashing uh, very fast. All right, folks. Thank you for watching. I can't think of anything else other than just get her out in the flyer. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless each and every one of you. Fair RC, thank you for this plane, for taking $376 of my money so I can uh, have it. <laughs> God bless each and every one of y'all. Don't forget, say family and friends.